Hey, this is John Marie Diginomica. So what happened to me, uh, SAP Tech Ed, didn't have enough DevOps content for me. So I decided to stir the pot, create some controversy. So I got some opinionated experts with me today. I've got Mark Fisher of uh, Neptune Software, and I've got John Appleby and Brent no Callahan, both from Avantra. These folks know a crap load about this topic, and I'm counting on them to stir the pot. And I'll, I'll get into why this topic is, is controversial. Uh, to me at least, I think in a good way. And obviously, it's a very hype-filled topic as well. So we need to kind of dig into this and really understand uh, you know, what this really means for customers and why we should even care about this topic in the first place. So we, we, that's a pretty packed agenda. How are we doing, guys? You ready to go? Absolutely. Go? Thanks for having us. Oh, excellent. Okay, cool. So uh, so what we're going to do to start out with is, is we're going to attempt to sort of agree upon some working definitions of the terms we're going to be using. Um, and, uh, and, and by way of disclosure, I want to mention that these companies that I'm talking to today are Diginomica partners, but this isn't a Diginomica podcast and I don't do stuff like this unless I feel like it. So this is just for fun, but I feel like in the interest of disclosure, I should say that. Um, so let's start with, with DevOps. I mean, DevOps has been around for a kind of a long time now. Uh, I wrote an article in 2013 with Chris Kernigan where we were trying to define this topic and why it mattered. So let me start with you, Martin, because you're active in this area with uh, DSAG, the German-speaking users group around DevOps. Can you tell us, what, what do you think is a good working definition of DevOps for today's customers? Yeah, and if, if somebody asks me a question like this, I always start with, uh, for me, it's uh, uh, the continuation of the whole Agile uh, story into the tech world. Because if we uh, put all the Scrum uh, methodology, for example, um, it actually ends uh, when we touch systems, um, kind of from, from from what it's talking about. And um, yeah, if if you worked in an agile project and um, yeah, which didn't follow any DevOps approach, you realized, especially in the SAP space, I think uh, that the technical uh, stuff is kind of not made for that kind of working. And DevOps is for me, yeah, the enablement of the uh, tech tools we are using uh, to to follow that HR methodology, and uh, yeah, also to acknowledge that there shouldn't be walls between teams, um, between operations and development teams, and yeah, now nowadays we have that uh, also the, that discussions about dev sec, sec of, ops and all that other stuff. Um, I just say I don't care about the name. Uh, walls between teams are never a good idea, and we should all, always have the full life cycle of an application in mind. I'm going to propose we ban the term DevSecOps from the podcast officially. <laughs> it's fully it's, agree. It's it's, it's, it's one of my it's it's <laughs> one of my least favorite uh, tech buzzwords of all time. And in my view today, if if security isn't interwoven in whatever IT philosophy you've embraced, you're an idiot. So let's just <laughs> let's just let's just assume that security by design is part of our mentality for this entire discussion. Um, now. Um, I want to read to you, Brenton, the mm. definition of DevOps from Amazon that I, it's a little wordy, it's a <laughs> little wordy, word. but it's a little wordy, but I want to get your take on this. Mm -hmm. DevOps is the combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increase an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity, evolving and improving products at a faster pace than organizations using traditional software development and infrastructure management processes. That's a pretty big mouthful. Basically, mm -hmm. they're saying you can do it better and faster. This speed enables organizations to better serve their customers and compete more efficiently in the market. <coughs> Doesn't that sound lovely? No. I have, uh, by the way, by the way, I have a lot of I have a lot of stats around DevOps adoption and the challenges thereof too we can get into. But um, and then they go into a bunch of different um, sort of use cases around DevOps that I thought were kind of interesting, but um, you know, practices I think are interesting. We don't have to touch on all of these today. Martin mentioned a couple already, but some of the big ones are continuous integration, continuous delivery, microservices, infrastructure as code, monitoring, logging, communication, and collaboration. So with all that said, what do you make of all that? Look, it's, it's the, I think it's the standard definition. If you go to Google, if you go to any search engine and you search DevOps, that's the page that everyone ends up at. For some reason, AWS is 
top of that list. Um, don't know why, but they are. It's not a bad definition. I've read it a few times. Um, but I like what you said, Martin. I think it walls, silos. For, for me, DevOps is about two things. It's about breaking down the walls, breaking down the silos. But it's that other word. And I think it was the, one of the first words you mentioned, John. It was the culture word. Because, you know, for, for me, tools and processes, they're well-defined. You can see what others are doing. Those stories are well-told. But if you're not bringing a cultural shift into how you're delivering for the business, delivering your software, um, breaking down the silos and dragging the operations folks into the center of the dev team and, and vice versa, bringing them all <clears> into <throat> one room, um, that to me is what DevOps is, um, supported by the tools, supported by the processes afterwards. Um, I almost, and th this might be a bit of a controversial view, I almost feel like if you focus on the tools and the exact way in which you're going to do things, the CI, CD, and don't get me wrong, they're important. But if you focus on them, you can quite easily get distracted and go down those rabbit holes to the point of just focusing on tools and saying, I do DevOps because I've got a CI, CD pipeline. Isn't it fantastic? No, you don't. You never, you bypass the cultural bit and your business isn't with you. For me, that's one of the most important things. Don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, that's, that's my rant a good, for the day. That's a good start. <laughs> that's a good start. I'm going to have a, hope. that's a good start. Oh, uh, hey, hey, oh. hey, hey, oh, hey, here hey, he comes. hey, hey, John, John Appleby, I want to get you to weigh in now. And I, I'm going to propose we yeah. hold off on the AI ops piece for just a little bit here and wrap, wrap around the mm -hmm. DevOps first. Why, why is this? Is this concept relevant to SAP environments and where are we running into problems in the sense of like <clears throat> some of this stuff strikes me as immediately relevant, but then I think about things like agile and, and trying to impose agile methodologies on, on a lot of SAP projects seems to me like maybe a fail or a problem or, or at least to Brenton's point, a culture issue. Where do you stand on kind of the relevance of DevOps and SAP and where are we in terms of our ability to actually achieve any of those things? I think first, I just want to quickly come back to the point of DevOps, because I, I almost feel like we may have confused people further, because uh, if you if you get confused by DevOps, you often think that it is what happens when IT operations people and developers get together in a room and party. <laughs> and, and, and that to me is a, is, a, is a fundamental misunderstanding of the concept of DevOps, because DevOps is applying the same principles of software development to IT operations, which is to say, instead of typing out the Bible every time you want a copy, you print a copy, you save it, you print another copy. And, and the, that, that's, it's as simple as that. And, and I do think, you know, you can get very sophisticated with it and we can get into CI, CD, but you can also just be really simplistic about it and say, we are going to develop IT operations like we develop software. And so we're going we're gonna to automate stuff as we go. And it can be as simple as that. And I think if we take that really simplistic de definition and we put it into an SAP context and we say, um, you know, we want to install a system in an automated way, you know, that's stuff that we can do from a DevOps perspective and, and achieve software development principles for IT operations. So just, I'm just trying to keep it simple. So yes, we can do it from an SAP perspective. When you when you bring it forward to you know full agile, you know I, I've met with companies like Microsoft. I'll, I'll give them a shout out who've done a phenomenal job of making their SAP um, architecture environment principles DevOps like, and and they've done really well. For a lot of companies, um, that isn't necessarily relevant because SAP to a lot of companies is a core a slow changing core of ERP software, and they right. don't want to apply agile software principles to it because it's not relevant. So you've got to think about what you're trying to achieve there, but you can do agile DevOps on SAP if you want to. The question is, do you want to? All right, I'm done running this discussion. Now, now we can actually just jump in, guys. But Mar Martin, can I just ask you, what what is your take? Because you're active in a DSAG group on this. What do, what are your members saying about this? What what are their pain points? Excitement? Whatever. Yeah, um, um, actually, um, so we we also suffered a bit uh, of COVID uh, because um, we we had no physical meetings as nobody had, and mm. uh, we we started quite quite good with because we had a, a full backlog for for sessions, and then we had virtual meetings every month with topics we already pre prepared before and then we had suddenly kind of a uh yeah 
um, um, a cut in, in in the topics pipeline, and then we we were asking ourselves, what is what's up? Uh, is the topic not relevant for uh, for the community? Are we too fast because we are focusing on kind of um, living DevOps stuff? So we 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 kind of we got got a lot of input from. Uh, companies who already uh, work uh, with that way of working and uh, from SAP, of course, like the G uh, CTS stuff uh, was also uh, discussed a lot within the group. And then we did a survey last spring, um, asked our members, um, yeah, what are your questions? And and there we, we had a quite clear feedback uh, that a lot of companies and um, yeah, we have a, around 1,000 uh, people signed into that group uh, within DSEC, um, not companies, but uh, individual members. Um, so, but uh, the interest is, I would say, high, um, but people are, and the companies uh, are not sure how they want to approach it. Uh, and yeah, they are, they are also getting confused by all that buzz around that uh, DevOps topic because they always, uh, they are always looking for the golden path. Mm -hmm. And uh, the truth is there is no golden path. There's your path and you have to adopt it and it will be a journey. And no, there will never be a go-live date uh, for introduction of DevOps. And then you are doing DevOps. That will be a continuous uh, journey for the whole company. And that are topics we are kind of um, yeah struggling with or we, we try to address it over workshops and, and so on. We are also in a, in a phase where we just define the way forward, but that's what, what we are aiming to, that we will more focus on interaction between the uh, members and, and uh, doing workshops and uh, just learning from each other. I think that makes the ma most sense. And um, yeah, of course, that the also uh, something which needs to need the the members need to be aware that there will never be a devops product the only devops product from sap because that's a, a big puzzle in the end there will be but there will be products in the devops category though right or yeah, sorry, the, enabling products yeah i mean yeah isn't, isn't that exactly what we saw with um build at, at tech it that's supposed to be the enabling product to bring the business closer to the operations folks closer to the development folks in theory i'm not entirely convinced personally but i think that's what they're they're going for rather than going for the devops pro ops product as you say yeah of course and there are already parts i mean uh, uh, the gcts for people who might not be into uh, that deep into that topic it's a git enabled uh, uh, chains and transport system yeah. which is kind of a revolution and we kind of uh, got that uh, discussion started with with uh, sap uh, four or five years back and um, it's cool that it's there but the uh, the usage is not that high yet there are several reasons for that we we don't need to go uh, deep in, into that one but that, i would kind of um take that with devops somehow but mm. i uh, in our uh pre discussion i already said um i hate it if a product is called devops because it's not uh, one product it's a way of working and uh, you can't um in my opinion, call a product DevOps something, whatever. Yeah, I completely <clears throat> agree. I completely agree. It's yeah. If, if you're calling it DevOps, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, kind of. You confuse the customers. So if I introduce that product, uh, I'm doing DevOps. Uh, no, <laughs> this product isn't existing in in uh, in non technology uh, in, in 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 not any of any technology stacks out there. John, you have this pensive look on your face. What's going on? Um, I, I just coming back to a discussion I was having earlier on on you know technology deployment versus culture, and I, I I do maybe this is controversial, but I do tend to think that technology you know can be an enabler for change, but only as part of a change program, obviously. And so there are. You know there are products that you can implement that that help uh with a devops journey our, our product by the way isn't really one of them so 
I'm not I'm not trying to pitch on that, but I I do think that there are there are people that do have products that help you implement DevOps principles. Maybe I would I would also not go as far as to say that because you implemented this, you're DevOpsy, but I definitely think that they can help. <laughs> Well, let me make a, a strong statement, and you guys can tell me if you agree or not. I, I'm I I I'm not going to sit here and impose agile methodologies on SAP customer projects. But if we use a more expansive definition of DevOps to talk about breaking down the walls between business and IT and and automating the admin side of SAP environments, like my argument is that SAP customers need to change, and that basis admins and engineers need to pay attention to this stuff. Or I think they risk a slide into something of uh, an irrelevant career path or a non-existent career path. <laughs> and I believe SAP needs to do a lot more, particularly at TechEd, but also elsewhere, to su support and promote these changes. I don't think one DevOps session is is enough. I think I think the DevOps theme uh, at TechEd should be pretty important. So react to that. I, I think you're right. And I think that you know, it, with 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 the folks that I talk to, I think any anybody who's in the SAP operations, you know, considers them considers themselves an SAP operations professional today. The smart ones are upskilling in other things, whether it be, hey, I need to figure out how 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 to work with Ansible playbooks. I need to figure out how to write some JavaScript so that I can use some of these low code or you know, no, pro, uh, pro code platforms. The smart ones are doing this already. Um, and I think you will probably get a lot more interest from them on specifically this track within TechEd if there was a bit more focus on that stuff as it relates to the job they have to do, which is their job is to run the systems, make sure they're up and provide business, the the, the, the business stability that is required to run the business. Um, so I'm, I'm actually in complete agreement with you, John. Me too. And I think uh, that applies not only for the DevOps topics, but um, uh, especially for all methodology topics, which are relevant for the whole SAP e ecosystem as well. Um, I think SAP did a quite uh, good job back when they were talking a lot about design thinking. They, mm. they, 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 they were really engaged even at TechEd. Uh, but nowadays, you don't find that kind of... Yeah, let's say um, meta level um, uh, talks about that topic. So you will not find a, a DevOps talk which explains the principles uh, of DevOps. They they have not many, but some talks on on the agenda for TechEd, uh, which but they they rather talk about how you can apply uh, or use one of their products to to work in a DevOps way. I wonder to the extent that that's about the individuals, because there, there were there were individuals at SAP that were executives in particular that were very you know DevOps centric some time ago, uh, and I I I wonder if that's now changed. What I heard from, uh, from what I hear from internal SAP, um, there's quite a good utilization of, of the DevOps principles, but I have the impression they don't make it to the outside world. Right. Yeah, that's sort of what I meant by because, you know, if you think about TechEd, TechEd is run by a small number of people that drive the content. Um, yeah, and but that was, that was going to be my next question, which is, is this about the content not being chosen or are we as a community not submitting content that fits this bill? And therefore, it's not there to be chosen because ultimately, tech ed talks are a mi mixture of stuff from SAP, but also stuff from partners, stuff from customers, stories from different um, places in the ecosystem. So maybe there, maybe this stuff isn't being submitted. Maybe people aren't talking about it from the community. It's just a challenge. Yeah, I think there's a lot of possibilities to explain some of that. And look, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of just taking an event and throwing it under the bus in the sense that. There's plenty of opportunities to, to correct this going forward, and I think that's the more important part of this is to get across to customers and to SAP that let's let's get these conversations jump started and and not even wait until next decade to 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 address this. Let's do it now, and and I think one of the pieces that's important to me is why aren't we why aren't we spending as much time looking at automating a lot of these mundane processes that that are just like slowing down ERP teams. This isn't just an SAP problem, by the way, 
but we, sp we spend so much time focused on cloud and business user empowerment. And I don't know that we've really spent nearly enough time modernizing backend operations. And to me, DevOps is a really good opportunity to get into that. And we'll get into AI ops in a little bit too and see if there's something there for us also. But but the point being like, uh, let's let's put more focus on that. And I do think low code something of an entry point as well, because now you can talk about, at least from the developer side, empowering developers and business users to automate more workflows and, and, and have more building blocks, essentially. Why don't we give people the building blocks so they're not wasting time on patches and upgrades and bug fixes when they're, when they're dealing with really pressing business problems. I mean, we know what the economy's like out there. This is not a real super fun time for businesses. Why are we wasting time on the back end? I don't. I, don't, I think we need to really bear down on this. Do I get a marketing job for Avantra now? <laughs> you, just dropped, you just dropped the mic, John. That's that's it. <laughs> We're done here. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean a very good question. I mean, um, I'm I'm uh, working for a low code uh, vendor, and um, if customers ask me, um, is it about code generation and um, um, well, um, getting uh, applications out of the box? I always answer, it's about getting uh, developers or making developers more efficient in what they are doing, and um, I think the same should apply for the basis guys. And um, I attended uh, at least uh, for some time uh, today's ABAPCon for the virtual ABAP uh, community conference. And I, uh, yeah, I witnessed the, the chat. Uh, there you, you really see uh, the, the issues which are the community or which the whole SAP community is facing. This is there's the big S S four elephant in the room uh, with with blocking the whole IT uh, departments and they the people are just kind of yeah blocked for two three years in uh, and new stuff which doesn't directly relate to the S four project are just postponed and I think that applies for DevOps and then the whole operation uh, automation whatever stuff as well and I. I had a quick check on the um, session catalog before uh, before our session here. Um, I didn't find anything about um, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of automation stuff, but that's all coming from the business side. Nothing about uh, operations automation. I think uh, at least I didn't find one. Mm -hmm. You know, if you guys saw one. Yeah, I mean we we're obviously naturally having different questions, and so we we see the opposite probably side of that, which is, you know, there are customers deciding when they're going to do their S4 journey. Uh, and they you know, sometime before 2027, some are doing it now. I spoke to a very large um, manufacturer. They have no plans right now. They're just complete wait and see. They stay on ECC. So I think if you're, if you're right in the middle of a, an S4 transformation, it's, it's obviously challenging to think about anything else and you're blinkered. But at least in our, in our conversations, we find just as many customers who are saying, well, we're, we're going to do S4. We're just not sure when. And in the meantime, you know, we need to take all the, all the fat and the inefficiency out of the IT support processes so that we can do S4 more easily in the future. So there's, there's a big spectrum as there always is and has been mm. and will be in an SAP. And I think to your point, John, as well, with, with the, the macro environment and, and what companies are feeling at the moment, it's hard to justify that. If you're not on the S4 journey, you know, how, how do you justify that to the business? Hey, we're, we're going to re-platform onto this new thing. It's not necessarily going to bring a huge amount of business value, but we have to do it because SAP say we have to do it. And in this environment, that's a very hard thing to prioritize. It's not saying they won't do it, but it's hard to prioritize. Yeah, and just to provide a little context on that too, in, in a transformation, like I think the vast majority of companies are committed to some type of transformation program at this point in time, uh, just because of the environment that we're facing. However, that to what you guys are saying, S4 isn't necessarily at the center of that or the top priority. The one thing that I think does need to change, however, is that a lot of cloud vendors, for example, will go in and say, hey, just ring fence your old ERP system for now since you're not moving forward with that upgrade and focus on these cloud deliverables that will help your customers on do this mm -hmm. or that. And that's fine to a point, but I think we need to flesh out a third path here where 
you're not just ring fencing an old environment, but to John's point, you're optimizing the crap out of it without mm-hmm. upgrading it. Right. And and I think that's where these these concepts like low code and DevOps deserve a very serious look. Yes, there's a lot of hype involved and it's not easy necessarily to dismantle that, but we need a third path here besides just letting old systems fester or or aggressively upgrading because that's not always a fit either. And, and like that, for me, that's exactly where I spend most of my day. It's talking to customers who are, uh, I like the way you phrase that, actually optimizing the crap out of it. They they have to. It has to run, the system has to run it the absolute best it can in as much of an automated way as it can. Not only does that obviously provide resilience in the core of the business, but it also frees up then those resources to even do better things and more things around the edges to deliver the business value that they're so desperately looking for. That that's literally what the, the life I'm living with the customers day in day out at the moment. And I think there's there's one piece I'd add to that as well, John. Is and I, I was talking to an old friend of ours. I, I can't can't share who it is on a public podcast because of the business that they they're involved in. And and um, he said that they t- they'd taken finance transformation to the business uh, for their very very large ERP system. And the business is just like oh, I've got other things to do. Like it's that's you, that's a technology solution to a problem that is not a priority for us right now. And they were trying to get S4 in through finance transformation because obviously as an IT team, they know they've got a 2027 deadline. And they've actually had to completely rethink that and move towards a very tactical, technical upgrade to keep themselves on track whilst then doing some other things around that because they've still got to, they've still got to do the priorities that the business has in parallel with that. And I, I think we're going to see customers taking that very tactical approach to an S4 upgrade still through the next five years and then saying, well, now, so we'll do that technical upgrade and we'll we'll apply some DevOps principles and we'll apply some IT operational automation. We'll, we'll optimize the cost and agility of this environment. And then we can do whatever the business wants. And, and if it comes back and they do want finance transformation through S4, uh, we've already got the platform in place. Yeah, and I think I think this is one reason why I'm kind of pushing, and I'll probably talk with ASUG leadership about this topic also. I think it's so important for customers to learn from each other on what these good next steps are around these terms. Because I, when I read that DevOps definition from AWS, and you know, it's like you read things like microservices, continuous integration. Those are not things you can like. Oh, oh, yeah. How's it going? Well, we put in continuous integration last week. It's going really well, you know, or we converted into a microservices infrastructure. I mean, th- these are major undertakings, right? Uh, so, so I think it's so important for customers to be able to have a learning journey where they're sharing what they're learning, because like, even like, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but if, if folks want to kind of get a broader framework, I recommend checking out some of Joe McKendrick's pieces on DevOps on ZDNet. He writes these kind of bite-sized blogs. They're not extensive, uh, but uh, Joe's a pal of mine. But he, he mostly kind of crunches DevOps surveys, and a lot of them say similar stuff, but there's a lot of paradoxes here. For example, in a recent article he, uh, around a uh, new survey on DevOps uh, and the players involved in making it successful, 7,000 open positions for DevOps engineers and specialists, and yet a recent survey by Progress Software points to a lot of the challenges we talked about. Things like uh, 86% are experiencing challenges in their current approach to security, uh, you know, uh, 76% acknowledge they need to be more strategic. So this this is not easy stuff, but I think that's not an excuse not to get started. And I think that's why, like, having customer roundtables and sharing lessons and use cases is, like, really, really important to, to moving this forward. Um, I want to get into AI ops in a couple of minutes, but before that, I guess, since I'm going to ask John to frame that for us... Um, Martin, do you have any sort of final comments? We can come back to this, but you said something earlier before we started taping that I didn't want to miss, which is you said that it irritates you when we define DevOps too technic- technical. Have we addressed that? Do we need to say more about that? Yeah, maybe we we addressed it implicitly. Um, I already said I, I hate products uh, which have a DevOps in their name. Um, that that. <laughs> The very same same reason because I think, and that's also just let's come back to the DSAG survey we did. Um, <laughs> there, 
80, 80 or 70 percent said uh, at least the uh, the bigger part of the, uh, all all the uh, answers we've got said okay um, the 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 methodology the uh, transformation part is the bigger part for us where we where we are kind of struggling uh, and in the end we got more technical questions uh, and and topic su suggestions for going forward uh, that so I think that's something we as a more technical audience are are struggling with but uh, we we shouldn't underestimate that whole transformation topic uh, because if you change the way of working and if you really want to do that uh, that doesn't work uh, for one team and um, it, it, it maybe grassroots initiatives are a good starting point but in the end you need the management buy-in in if it uh, should work for the company in the end and therefore uh, that's nothing which can be defined within a, a, a team of uh, 10 developers and ops people I think and therefore very very important topic and uh, I would love to see also a bit more messaging from SAP around that topic I think All right, are we ready for AI ops? <laughs> I, I, I hope I hope listeners' uh, buzzword tolerance level has has not <laughs> been lost because we're about to go go deeper into that game. So so John, uh, AI ops, do we need this term? Why does it matter? Is it an enhancement of DevOps? <clears throat> Is it a different concept entirely? How do you think about this in in, in an SAP setting? Where do I start? Um, so I, I, my definition of AI ops, I try and keep it really simple. So, so my, my definition is the, the, the use of rules, algorithms, artificial intelligence, whatever you want to call it, use it, but com computer automated processes to automate IT operations. So, so simple as that. And I, and I know Gartner makes it a little bit more complicated, but I, I try and I try to keep these sim things simple. And, um, at least to me, and uh, you know, th this is my business, so I am biased. But I think that this is a tremendous and should be a greater priority for every SAP customer. A and the reason why is that the the principles that underlie AI ops and, and indeed DevOps um, are problems that have been solved everywhere, everywhere else in the IT environment. Yeah, you know, you don't hear about Salesforce talking about how you need an army of people to install and maintain the system. And I get it, SaaS and SAP has SaaS too, but you, you equally don't have that problem with Microsoft. I mean, they, they had, I, I can't remember what the software was called. It's now called SCOM. I don't know what that stands for anymore, but, but they have software that installs, monitors, and maintains their Microsoft tooling, patches and maintains it. And they've had that for 20 years. Um, and so this is something that costs SAP business is a tremendous amount of money. There are hundreds of thousands of people out there doing manual work that's been automated in other environments for 20 years. And so from, from our side, that's obviously what we set out to do. But there's, there's just so much low-hanging fruit out there, even in 2022. I find it insane. So, John, just real quick on that. Do you, is it helpful to have some of these DevOps principles in place in order to – is AI ops something you would apply – into that context, or is it? Can it be a separate thing, or how do you think about the two? I, I see them broadly as broadly as separate things because you you can do they do work well together, but you can also do one without the other. I mean, so so you can have AI ops, which is effectively the the connection of observability through workflows to actions and automations. So you can say, right here, here is my best practice. Now go and check all of the hundred systems I've got against that, alert me if something is wrong, automate to do something about that. You can apply those principles without DevOps if you want to, or you can apply them with DevOps. And, and equally, when it comes to DevOps, which is primarily around you know change, you, you can do that without AI, AI ops, and you can get value out of that, and you can improve the CICD, and you can do pipeline and all of that stuff. But, they, but obviously... You know, you, one on one do equal three there because if you have both, then you've got both types of agility. But they but they exist separately. Brenton, at the risk of offending your colleague John, do you 
disagree with his definition or I, I kind of make it my life's work to not agree with John let, let's face it um but no I mean I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be working in the business if I if I didn't agree with it I do um uh, agree with it and I will say that the combination of the two is not something um that is uh, unobtainable I think um I'm thinking of one particular customer in particular who through the use of of uh, an AI ops platform where they're they're using low code no code um, and even pro code to use the third term let's use all the buzzwords today um, to build extra observations <laughs> to build um, um, uh, automations and all that kind of stuff they are creating and deploying those using DevOps principles so it's so finely ingrained into how they just operate that as an operations team and by the way that's a mixed team of SAP and non-SAP folks and maybe that's the key here um, that they were just so used to saying right we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna use CI/CD. We're gonna put it into a Git repository. It'll be automatically deployed in, into the system, and it'll be activated. And suddenly we have you know auditability on the code set. We have testing completed automatically. Blah blah blah. Like you can combine these two things, and it it is kind of a utopian endpoint. And I know Martin's probably rolling his eyes, uh, saying there is no endpoint. It's a journey. You just keep going on the journey. But to to achieve something like that is completely possible. Um, and I'm seeing it in, in customers today. Sorry, I had to agree with him. I know you wanted me to disagree. No, it's all good. Should we <laughs> should, should we defer to Martin, who is yeah, not, there we go. Not not um probably marketing AI ops to his customers as we speak. Martin is what? What do you give us your your view on this um first of all i, w I want to uh, comment on that uh end point of the uh, journey uh, i think it's uh, indeed possible to to have one tick box in that mm -hmm. uh, devops uh, tool set and uh, topic um, agenda or w which you can address you don't need to or depending on on your setting and you can have a tick box where you say i'm done with that for now uh at least from a technical perspective and then uh you you should have your retros and and whatever uh just to um always question the whole approach uh but i i think from a technical point of view it's possible to to have one certain aspect uh, just kind of solved for the for the time being uh i don't dis disagree with that one um yeah no um i'm uh you uh, john said it uh there are topics in in the SAP ecospace uh, which are no topics anymore in many other tech uh, ecosystems, and that's something which uh, kind of drives me crazy since years. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, uh, my background is uh, rather in software development, but um, how uh, how uh, yeah how many developers out there? Do not know anything about software architecture in the above space, and I'm I, I'm getting crazy with, with that topic. But th that now now I'm going really off topic. Um, but I think that applies the same applies for for the ops and, and basis guys. Um, and uh, I mean, if you see the the whole AI capabilities which are out there now, uh, I think it it makes totally sense to have uh or to apply that to something very technical um where you have a lot of data and uh you can analyze them um why not <laughs> why <laughs> um definitely makes sense for me especially when it comes to you know sap systems where to keep them running there's so much repeated effort yeah that quite frankly should be automated probably should have been automated a very very long time ago um, and so, you know, if, if you're, if you're still doing that stuff manually, oh, I feel really sorry for you. I really do. Because, you know, that, that, that's such wasted time that you could be using to do such interesting things. You know, it's interesting as you think about like that, that we, we have observability is an interesting concept because we have such a profound lack of visibility into complex enterprise systems, especially like how they're working together and where the potential breaking points might be. And then you start thinking about like, well, because I do this a bit with Diginomica because I run our web architecture and we are not an enterprise shop by any means, but I feel like I get a little bit of a taste of little teaser of what that might be like. And it's like, well, start thinking, well, dashboard would be cool, but you know, what'd be even cooler is 
if if our dev team just solved this problem one way or the other, so I didn't even have to like look at it on a dashboard, it would I would just get a ping or a notice that it was fixed. Right. And, you know, so one example is like we're having a little issue with with our Google Cloud audio reader for some of our stories. And it's like we're talking about, oh, we're going to look at the long files. We're going to, you know, we're going to figure out what the problem is, what which service is breaking down, you know, and it's and I start thinking about like, well, it'd be kind of cool if, if the dev team could automate that. And it's like, you know, it'd be even cooler if there was a product that just automated that, like that they didn't even have to do it. And to me, I don't know if that's DevOps or AI ops or some combination of the two, and I don't really care. But it appeals to me this notion that we're not just observing things on a dashboard. Things are just getting fixed and sorted. And I don't even have to look at it and be like, oh, here's a problem I got to fix. It just happens. I mean, is this the kind of conversation we should be having? It seems to me, yes. So you're, you're, it's like you're writing my product roadmap, John. Damn it. <laughs> but, but, uh, He's an analyst. I was talking to someone. Yeah, it's true. Um, I mean, I was I, I was talking to somebody earlier today, and one of the things that we're talking about is is automating automation, right? So, so how do you and and, and it's not. I, I think you've taken it a step too far, uh, at least as far as enterprise tech goes, which is what right. what I think customers would really kill for is automatic problem detection. Um, connects to change management because you, you generally don't want automated resolution. In general, there, there are cases where right. you might want to, but in general, what you actually want is a human to validate. Yeah. Um, I found this. This is the recommended action. Approve, don't approve. Modify. Well, especially when, you, especially when you take into account bad actors and malicious code and things like that, the 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 yeah. scenario I described doesn't really fit as well for that in an enterprise context where you can't have that in an enterprise context you want you want a human change management approval then and then an automation comes out the back of that it's, it's configured and then it executes typically again not immediately typically during an agreed change window because the system might have to come down to make a change but if an agree if a change window is agreed then the system can come down a change can get made the system can be brought back up of course then pass back to that same individual to say change is complete please confirm and and i think that that's that can be real um, uh, and we can uh, call it a buzzword but yeah i'm sure we can add a, a buzzword but i actually have a, a real scenario where um as what you just described scared the hell out of one of uh, the, I think it was a prospect we were talking to, and our tech guys, technical guys got really excited. They were like, "Look at this! The system's overloaded. It de we, it detects it, spins up another system, adds it to the login pool, and it's fantastic. The, the, you know everything's great." And you could just see the person going, "What about my budgets? You're spinning up systems yeah. all over the place. <laughs> what about my budgets?" And they got really kind of like, "Okay, that, no, that's too far, too far." And what was obvious there was like, okay, without the approval, without the human intervention to say, actually, this is okay, the business was not comfortable with that level and degree of automation, which I, uh, I love telling that story. You just need workflows, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, designing these systems is a big part of the challenge, right? To make sure that people feel they're being included at the proper points and and yet i still yeah, think this whole I, I still think this whole thing around dashboard fatigue is important though right just observability is is not the end state of this conversation uh, observability is is merely is merely the ability to understand and at a machine level when things are right and when they're wrong um putting observability into the hands of humans is 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 not even monitoring automation. Indeed. Well, you know, we can't have an alternative tech ed in one session, but I feel like we at least provoked an interesting conversation. Um, I'd like to, uh, I'm going to give you all each a chance to kind of share some closing thoughts. But before we do that, if, if you, I think we addressed a little bit like, different things the the basis engineer the individual can do to go on a, a learning journey around this and i'm and i'm sure there's a lot of things what would you do though if you if you were a customer who watched this and was intrigued but some of the concepts are kind of new what are some of the next steps that a customer should be thinking about in terms of yeah they're not maybe they're not putting an s4 
right away. It's on the roadmap, perhaps. But what can they do now to optimize their environment? How, how should they go about better understanding what to do? If they are totally new to the DevOps topic, I would recommend two books, actually. The Phoenix Project, and what, mm. what is the name? I have to uh, check in my shelf. What's the second one of the from the same author? The, the second book. I've read them both. They're very good. Yeah, uh, Phoenix Project and the other one. Uh, Where the, is it? I want to say I want to say Unicorn, but it's not. Is it at the? Uh, right. Um, I, 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 let me Google, Google it for you. <laughs> Google it for you. Yes. Excellent <laughs> live live information gathering on podcasts. <laughs> I wish we had automated this somehow with It is DevOps. the Unicorn Project. The Unicorn Project, yeah. The yeah. Unicorn Project. Right. Yeah, there we go. Uh, both were, uh, very good books. You can, uh, I mean, they are not technical. Uh, no. Easy, easy reading. Mm -hmm. You can read them in bed before you fall asleep, but they are really good written, and you get the sense of doing that. And it's not, as I said, not about technical solutions, um, and a really, really good book. Or really, really good books. Uh, mm -hmm. They are there too. It it shifts your your perspective on uh, on how you should be approaching this stuff. But it does it as you say, not in a technical way, through real world stories that I think any reader could relate to. And that's what I really liked about those. I, I do, and, and and when you've read those, because they are great. If, if you've not read those, they're both absolutely excellent. Like they're, they're parables, um, like the like this. Um, there's a bunch of them anyway. Five dysfunctions of a team. Patrick Lencioni, for anyone's a fan of that stuff. That's not related to this, but they're they're parallels similar to Lencioni style. Um, I I would then say when when you've done that, you try to see the world through a different lens, and the lens is simple. Think of SAP like any other piece of enterprise software, because people get on their pedestal. And they think that SAP is special. SAP is tremendously complicated, and that makes it appear special. But I, I've seen the stuff that, that my team has done. They've managed to automate the most sophisticated and complicated things that people said weren't possible. And so, so open your eyes to that possibility that the world can be different, and you can apply what you learn to an SAP environment, to your SAP environment, and then go and challenge your people to do that and drive that change. Because if, if you don't do that, you're going to be behind in, in five years time, you're going to find the move to S4 hard, you're going to find the move to the cloud hard, and you're going to and you're going to find the increasing demands on the business on that are happening via m a projects that need to be done, they're going to be crushing to your business because other people are solving these problems. So so go and be that change that be that would be my challenge. And I, I, I think I, I'd um take a slightly different approach. I get to disagree with John, finally. I, I take a slightly <laughs> different approach um, because there can be an element of paralysis that comes into this because if you take the big things and you say, I'm going to automate this big thing over here, it's how do I get started? I need all these other foundational elements first and it becomes this giant, huge thing that you have to do. Um, I take a slightly different approach with, with, uh, with, with folks I work with which is what are the small quick wins that really drive value for the business? So if you can identify those, again, taking that kind of second lens and saying, right, why did I do that manually? Or why, why are we spending 10 hours a week doing this obviously repeatable task? And are there parts of it we could automate? And chances are it's not that complicated to automate those small repetitive tasks. And if you start with those, you get 10 hours back. Great, now what are the next things that you're gonna spend those 10 hours what are the next things you're going to automate with those? And you kind of create this snowball effect um, from the ground up to make the lives of your, your folks easier um, and to deliver business value through giving back time to the business. Um, that's one of the ways I would recommend folks get started. Yeah, I like this. And, and I, can, I can share in general with you all uh, out there that to me, there's like three things we need right now for any type of, of project initiative like this. In a, in a piece I did on Cinebra, which is a Latin American um, paper pulp um, manufacturer, SAP customer uh, that did a bunch of process automation stuff, um, they're actually, we're using a, a, an automation roadmap provided by SAP 
that that's kind of like a series of steps. But the bulk, the bottom line is it's an energizing vision that they bought into. And I think you need to have something like that, like something that energizes you that has an exciting long-term destination for that, that people can rally around. But then of course you need the steps along the way. You need some kind of maturity model so you can track that because you're not going to get that done in a year or two. And then to Brenton's point, and I think this is crucially important in the economy we have now, if you're going to embark upon this stuff, you need to be able to stack up. Uh, the cliche is the quick wins. It's such a yucky, silly phrase. But the point is you have to, you have to pay as you go now, you know, because the, the executive team's going to call you in and say, how are we doing? It's been three months and you need to be able to say, we did this, we did that. We already automated this. And if you want to kind of look at how to get started and what some of the use cases are, that all depends on who you're working with. Um, I did a piece on one of Vantra's customers, Scott's Miracle Grow. They had some really interesting, really basic practical stuff that they got started with. But I mean, it all depends on like who you're partnering with. And But but have a look and see if they can come up with a handful of use cases for your environment. You know, whoever you're going to partner with on this. Uh, I, I suspect most organizations don't have enough people internally that know this stuff. You're probably going to need some kind of partner to get started. But whatever, you know, find one you trust, walk through some use cases and make sure, like like Brenton's saying, you have some stuff that you can bang out. The uh, pay as you go is yeah. is is the deal now. And and so you have to be able to prove that. Otherwise your long term vision is just kind of irrelevant. So that's my view on that. Okay, we're almost out of time. We should wrap. Uh I'll give each of you a final shot, whatever you think we missed or want to emphasize, go for it. <laughs> Awkward silence ensues. <laughs> I was waiting, who, who is going to speak first? <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm, not, I'm not orchestrating this part, so we're just going to have to live with that. I'm really glad you're cutting this afterwards. You are cutting this afterwards, right? <laughs> we'll we'll see. It might, be it might be entertaining for the listeners to hear, <laughs> to hear that. We'll, we'll, I'll decide later. Go on. Martin, you go first. I go first. Uh, I think we, we covered uh, pretty much the whole topic i mean there was not too much to cover from TechEd because there were not too many sessions about the the whole topic uh i hope you said there was one fabulous session though ah yeah uh there, which there is available on which is available on replay so if you go on to the tech ed site <laughs> yeah I, and search I mean, for devops my, you will find this uh, let me go to the, my browser here i somewhere have it there is a company based in chicago if i remember right uh, they are offering they are offering um, containers with S4 in it uh, for your developers, so that you can kind of and and the whole, whole uh, tool chain, so that you can have your CI CD pipeline with uh, ABAP development. Uh, now you got me on the wrong foot, as we say in German. Um, I don't remember the name of the company at the session. <laughs> yeah, maybe the others go and I, I tell it afterwards. Yep, sounds good. I, I, I'll jump in, and it's it's kind of trying not to rehash what I was saying earlier. But for, for me, the, the the takeaway should be: look, it's it's not as difficult as it may seem, especially in the AI op, AI op space to get started. Um, you know, I, identify the repetitive manual effort that really is a time suck um within the business and, and I'm, I'm being a little bit less strategic here i'm talking about you know down, down in the grassroots where, where the folks are actually doing 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 the operations but identify the stuff that's repeating and say you know what let's take bites out of that let's start small build it up build it up build it up and and the final thing and actually john you said this and it was a point i forgot to make which was track it because it is amazing how quickly you forget what life used to be like and you, you you put in this automation, it makes your life easier, but then you forget that it was what it was like to ha not have it. And if you forget about it, you can't quantify it. If you can't quantify it, you can't justify it, and therefore you won't get the the ability to to get further investment. So that, that's what I would say. Yeah, and I, and I think the the thing I would then then add to that, which builds on my previous point, is um, the blocking and tackling is the problem. Don't, don't be afraid to start small because if, if you if, if you do something, I don't know, I, I'll give you like a banal example that a customer told me was important to them. New user creation, you know, being able to push that out to a service desk to do systematic, correct new user creation with the correct roles and profiles and give that out to a basic IT service desk and they do that through ServiceNow 
rather than having to log into SAP systems and an SAP security person doing that. You know, that's, that's like just the simplest kind of blocking and tackling that actually does matter because you just freed up the time of a qualified and experienced professional. So it, nothing's too small. Yeah. Martin, did you determine the name of the session? Yes, of course. Um, it's DevOps for SAP with isolated development environments. Uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, identifier is AD201. And the company is called, uh, where is it? New F Platform. Um, and uh, really, you you should have a look. And I can even uh, send it to you. Maybe you can add it to the show notes somehow. Great. Yep, no problem. All I right. will. Awesome. Well, thanks all for indulging my alternative tech ed fantasies. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I hope. There's. The I hope the. I hope the the basis and admin types out there feel energized and respected by this shout out. So you have you are not forgotten the lo in all the low code mania of of tech ed on the ground. We didn't forget you. Thanks all. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it, Tom.